So this actually is the takeaway. This is Weibo saying, we don't care about the Rengar. We don't care about the Rel. The other thing that Tianjin leaned heavily on, well, not heavily, but his second most played in two games was the Maokai. <laughs> So I think they're going to want to try and make Tianjin uncomfortable, not give him an easy time where he could just supplement his, his team with these saplings. The <laughs> smile from Shahu. He, he just goes straight for it. Uh, Weibo were willing to play into this. And now it's going to see how IG build around, you know, this this assassin, this this dive jungler that needs to go. And an Ari would be something that pairs with it well. God, why am I getting like anime protagonist vibes right now from Weibo? It's just gonna, they're they're just standing there. They're gonna take all the punches and see what IG can give with this new roster retooled for playoffs. The Ari, a crucial combination with the Rengar. Yeah, now Weibo. It's actually surprising. Uh, we're having no picks leaning into bot lane so far. We still have things like the Zy Zyrakan left open. The Zeri has been something that's really been coming into prominence lately. You would have a lot of mobility to try to play around and get away from this Rengar and Ari. And I guess the nice thing about giving over something like the Rengar early is when you're going for the Zeri, right, you usually have to be so afraid of the Vi getting locked in on the opposite side, but Weibo know exactly what they're going into. And Light Zeri does get kind of nutty. Uh, again, goes back to the conversation of being kind of let late game Hyperscale and carry will be just fine in that role this time around to kick off the series as a whole. And with a double marksman composition that they're going to lock in here, it gives them a lot of pressure if they can get ahead. And this, in my mind, is way about leaning into their shanks, right? Double 80 carry Tristan in mid means your game is going to be a lot more about taking turrets at the speed you can take neutral objectives. So I do like that they're continuing to lean in to what they love to do. Now for IG, you're probably going to want to get, you know, a semblance of your bot lane going so far. I mean, if... Ooh, I was going <laughs> to say, if they want to match the scaling, you'd have things like the Jigs, but IG are all inning on the early game. Gotta love this. And on Classic as well. He made the maneuver at the beginning that, uh, setting the tone for this series. And he's going to have to have a big performance here on the Draven. Now for IG, we have supports, we have ADs left. I mean, supports and tops. I was gonna, I feel like there's enough in the bot lane pool that just taking away things you don't want YS game going into is a good call. They're going to take away the rumble, which uh, is something that ZDZ can play. I always love the rumble in LPL. Gives you so much flexibility, but also just so much turnaround potential. Laying out the red carpet. It is going to be the Blitzcrank band against Wink. We've seen him pull this one out before, but also just gives you that extra potential kill pressure with the Draven. Yeah, it's going to be... I'm kind of curious to see where IG go with their last two picks, right? Because but the fact that they already have a Rengar and a Draven, I, like, they already have a lot of volatility in their draft, and you're going to want to enable this Draven. So do they just walk back to, to putting YSKM on that Cassante like we were hitting on? Or... Uh, <laughs> Are they going to go even more? No, let's go. I was going to say, are they going to go even more volatile, right? Like, do they lean into a Camille or, or another one of their unique picks and just say, screw it, we are all jumping onto Shaolin Light? And it was funny in our conversation set up this series, you know, there there wasn't a lengthy conversation about ZDZ's rise and uh, what he can do to YS Camp to kind of shut him down here today. So I'm very curious now what kind of depth the champion pool will get between these two guys. It is the Renata band away against IG. Yeah, so probably going to want to try and find some hard engage in this spot lane. But things like the Nautilus and Blitzcrank gone, it's hard. It's finally enough. We've been seeing things. We saw the Thresh come back yesterday, which is something that definitely comes to mind. But even things like the Alistar, the Rakan still left open. But IG... I'm kind of surprised they aren't going to look to go for the counter pick in top lane. I'm also just surprised that Azir is not being picked up by either side to kick it off to try to flex some power potential. But a Jax for Wise Cam is a known quantity. Also something he's very strong at. Finds those very crucial, I, I feel like, counter strikes within team fights that uh, just change the game sometimes. It's going to be hard in this one though, right? You it have is. both Zeri and Tristana, which have mobility. You have something like the Maokai shutting them down. And now Weibo... Even going to go the direction of the Gragas. I would like if they lock this in. Uh, it's Big something that, you know, boy. has a fine time in that top lane 1v1 against the Jax. You can always sustain up with your passive. You can always just bonk him away uh, with your E if you need to. So, so far, I'm really liking what Weibo have. But even for IG, both of these teams have heavily leaned 
into their identities from what we've seen so far this split. It's so crazy, right? Like sometimes you expect teams to come up with some different strategies and then they rely on those tried and true ones as the series goes on. No, both teams are like, no, let's just play to what we know works and see what your response is going to be. I really like Crisp on the Rakan, not only for the engage potential that he provides, his uh, engage play I feel like has really turned up, but the roam potential that is a crux of Weibo. But speaking of roam potential, yep, there it goes. Go. He locks it in. This has been his most played support over the past week in solo queue. So I love that IG have leaned into like, let's get on comfort. Let's try to smash them early where Weibo are more passive and really just try to run over the game. I think we have two very clear game plans, right? IG snowballing early, getting those gold leads, trying to end the game. 25 30 minutes for Weibo holding out early and playing more for that long game with how quickly they could take things like Dragon and Baron. They need to be able to weather the storm, it feels like, for Weibo, which uh, coming into this one, we would have expected them to have their uh, their anti raincoats on, everything ready to go, but you've got to be able to withstand a lot of the comfort. We've seen it reign supreme around the world, and I think for IG. They come in with Tianjin, they come in with this style now leaning towards him where Weibo literally stood in front of them waving their fingers say, come at me, bro, because they let this crucial pick through. So much has relied on IG's success around jungle, around this bot lane early 2v2, and it will continue to be so important here. Yeah, again, a lot these teams are playing for IG. It's been since 2021 since they made playoffs for Weibo. They're coming off <laughs> going all the way to world finals. So I think both these teams having a lot to prove because of the circumstances that they're in. We're getting into game one now, and it's sure to be a best of five to remember. Lives on the line here for spring. It's Weibo Gaming versus Invictus Gaming. We have all that early game pressure from IG, and we have the storm needing to be held through for Weibo. Let's hear those Jayos roar. They say confidence is key lyric, and man, how confident do you think IG's coach and IG as a whole were going into this game, man? They got like all the picks that they could have ever asked for. It feels like a, a composition tool to their strengths. I feel like it has to be one of those things that like slowly as draft progresses pick by pick. Like, IG have to be going from, yo guys, look, we're getting all of our picks, ha ha, hoo hoo, to like, huh, guys, we're they're giving us all of our one tricks. <laughs> Wait, what? is this a trap? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting because also other dynamics are at play here, right? When Weibo do give you everything that your team loves to play, when they give over Tianjin his best pick in the Rengar, when you give the Draven, if this doesn't turn into a win, I mean, that could be a big confidence hit in a best of five where it's like, hey, that was, yeah. that was the best that we had. I guess the silver lining is, again, obviously IG do have uh, sub top, sub juggler, sub, sub everything's if they do need to make changes, but we'll see how it goes. We expect a lot from them 2v2 down bot. Uh, their other two lanes though are gonna be a bit neutralized. Gragas again can neutralize Jax perfectly. Tristana should be able to keep push up against Ari. So it's just gonna be a lot about the isolated 2v2 for now. Yeah, and uh, seeing what IG can get a nice little hook there is like if be brought down with that ignite coming through. That's all you want early. You just want to get that pressure and maintain dominance. Yeah, doing a nice job of already off to a good start. And again, this was how IG was finding wins very early on in the split. I think it's going to stay in people's minds of the Luyen hard carries that we've been seeing recently, whether the Nidalees, the Brands, whatever it's been. But before he was subbed in, IG was still doing decently well uh, in the standings. And all of it was off of the aggression we're seeing now. And look at the CS lead that's already come from it. It's going to be huge. Uh, I do want to check it with the junglers. A little bit of vision spotting out Tianjin, pathing down towards his bot side, but the path going to be matched by Xiao Hao as well. And we don't expect too much from Tianjin early on the Rengar, right? He's going to have to focus on being able to get his camps done. Of course, taking the fleet to have a bit of an easier time because doing that first clears Rengar uh, can be a little bit tough. And I love that we don't need to keep our eyes on the jungler. I'm actually more curious about Wink in the movement he's making right now, hovering around mid. Let's see if he can find anything early. Get it active before Crisp can. I think that's the importance of this pike pick 
and uh, something Wink will be able to rely on pretty heavily. And I think the reset's also going to be super important. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, top side matchup a little bit here because I, I, I think ZDZ has been waiting for this matchup in a way, especially knowing how YSKM has had a lot of success on his jacks. The, the, the Gragas for ZDZ is something that I've actually really enjoyed, but it's also the first time he's played at this entire split. I mean, right, it's, it hasn't been a champion uh, that's been meta, and that's really just the dynamic of a lot of the champions we've had in top lane, right? You're, you're not picking Gragas into a new deer, into, into an Aatrox, really, into the Cassante. So uh, it is nice to see him be able to come out as Tian Chen. Yep, that's There's a kitty right there. You just can't gank mid like you used to. <laughs> I remember these rocks used to go for miles. Yeah, there's be better days. Better days when we need more brawling around the mid lane, but I guess not better days for Weibo. Is Weibo going to be fine with this wing? Ooh, nice re-engage there from Chris. I love it. We're just getting the back and forth switcheroos here between the teams. Yeah, you're right. Great call by Chris, right? He sees Wink going in. He knows, hey, if I can distract and gauge on at the same time, there's no kill threat able to come through. And it's curious, Wink is actually using the like early tick up of that uh, hook as well to try to get the close range version of it. And I like it here because it gives you a lot less time to react to it. Yeah, definitely a guy who knows how to play the pike. And Wink, in my mind, has actually been the best player on IG this split. It, it's really great to see how he's grown, but crying now might be under threat. Really good connection there. He misses the charm as well. Is he gonna go down? Explosive charge with one auto. Xiaohu on the board, first blood for Weibo. Weibo showing Tianjin and crying how it's done. And the way it's done is by being decisive. Xiaohu did not waste any time with that flash to help Xiaohu secure that kill. And if you want anybody to be ahead, it's definitely Xiaohu for this Weibo roster. Again, we kind of highlighted earlier, but uh, the master versus the apprentice in this mid lane between Xiaohu and Kryon. And Xiaohu getting the better of him already with a little bit of love from that duo with Xiaohu. Oh, how That's beautiful. That's so good, man. Dodges out on the ward. Great and job. And he flashed, too. Oh. Just, uh, just great planning from Weibo. Great job of keeping track of the wards and knowing exactly how to make the play happen. And again, all eyes are going to be on Shahu, I think, especially in terms of form, if he could step up even more. People might forget, but Weibo in 2023 summer didn't have a great finish. They finished six in the regular season and even went out in that same route in playoffs. Uh, but they made the run through the gauntlet at Worlds because that's when Shahu really stepped up and was putting on those huge carry performances uh, in the regional finals. So who knows? Maybe here with all the pressure on, this is where you can really start to turn it on and show us that Weibo are going to be a team we have to take seriously. And I love that they're starting off by kind of giving Xiaohu the reins here, where typically, uh, you know, he when he has a lot of the proficiency, it's on roaming to the side lanes here. Now he's going to have some proficiency dodging out of Cryd's charm. Oh, man, he's in his head. I mean, how can he not be, right? He's he's like sitting there, you young timer, I taught you everything you know. I taught like, you everything. And what, what can he do? Oh, goodness gracious. They got to find something to do because that combination between the Ari and the Rengar is so important for this roster. And uh, honestly, for this composition to get off the ground running. Xiaohao will show his face bot side. They do know that the dragon has started. Nice little flash there coming out from on, getting away from the engage. They find the Bramble Smash, but it's going to be IG now in some trouble. Grind is on his way in. They're going to re-engage here. They want to get some damage for onto Xiaohao. He goes down on, gets the cash in here too. That's huge. They Tianjin wants to keep going. They can't get the hook. They do finally get the Bone Skewer and Light's going to go down too. Tianjin gets another one for his team. And that'll be a two for one lead for IG. And it just felt like a fight that Weibo really didn't need to look for. Great job by IG capitalizing on the overforce coming out from Weibo. Now a kill on Draven, a kill on uh, Rengar. Exactly the champions you want to pick up the gold. That's insane. The gold just drops right into the pockets of the needy there for this roster. And uh, now they can actually utilize some of that strength. Try to go mid lane potentially with Wink on a roam, but will be spotted out by the ward. Xiaohu's just playing with so much confidence. He does not fear Kryon's like, potential to charm him whatsoever. And things are actually going so great for Weibo to start off. They get the Draven Flasher looking to keep going, but that just seems like an overzealous uh, W, and especially to keep following it up. The amount of CC that IG have, charm on the Ari, the net, 
on the Rengar, the hook on the pipe. Because he did such a great job of locking Xiao Hao down for so long that he had nowhere to go. I'm just saying, watching Tianjin navigate this fight is actually insane. Why did they let this man get this pick? Like, he's literally jumping all over them. And the thing you don't realize about a Rengar is how sustainable he is in these little fights and these little skirmishes. And Tianjin knows that. And they utilize that strength. Now you've got Essence Reaver at like 820 for on on the Draven. And that's why I think it was such a big misstep from Weibo because we said, hey, IG are looking to, to make this a 25-minute, 30-minute game. And Weibo had a gold lead early up until that misstep and maybe going to be able to find more, but nope. With Rocket Jump Flash and, and even his ult still up, Xiao is probably absolutely vibing <laughs> until he's forced into a team fight. And the, the biggest conversation was Weibo needed to weather the storm. Well, the storm is out there, and it is a plenty, but the lead is not that far ahead of them. So a monumental lead was kind of needed for IG. They will find the first neutral objective here in their dragon. It is pretty late. Yeah, so they aren't really getting those uh, stocked up just yet. They still have the potential to play for more grubs and maybe get things going that way, right? Because, I mean, hell... Once neutral objectives are on the map, you start fighting over them. That's where IG's comp really went to snowball. So this is where the opportunity is just starting. So it's really going to be about the next 10-minute window for IG. Yeah. Weibo might not even opt into fighting a lot of these neutrals, though. Like you said, yeah. first dragon's so late. Who cares? Well, but I think the, the dragon itself is going to be a really big boon to IG, especially if they get those, or if, I guess, not early stackings, but continue to do so. Ooh, why is Cam? Gonna pop his Grandmaster is there. ZDZ ready to go, but had to use the cask. So very, very advantageous trade from Weibo's top side. Yeah, doing a great job. ZDZ not really a player we get to talk about all too much. Uh, usually, you know, I think a very middle of the pack top laner uh, is how most people would view him. Definitely stepping up, I think, in some of his other carry performances. Though, again, the Quinn was able to find the comeback, had some decent TF games earlier on, and having a great time. The grog. It's like you said, it seems like CDC was waiting for this. <laughs> he's just having a good time. You know, there's no TP available for YSKM, so he's just having fun, drinking his cask, pushing in his wave. Nobody's ever going to come visit him on this island up here, so it's fine because everybody wants to be down bot side for that party. And you, we also need to look at mid lane CS, right? Because it actually doesn't matter about the kills that Tianjin and Ana have been able to find. Even the slight gold lead that the Draven has over the Zeri is completely outdone by the CS leads in mid and top. Xiaohu, we've already seen multiple times taking so many plates. So it seems like things still in a decent spot, especially now with Xiaohu having the Kraken Slayer. Knight's Foul just finished up by Xiaohu as well, showing he's just going to be that full-on supportive force peeling for his carries. I'm very curious at how they can approach these next couple of minutes. Uh, Xiaohu can buffer pretty easily. Wink going to be in a position where soon he can kind of chase that down and utilizing that's going to be really important. Now, you did get those two grubs already for IG as well. I wonder if they do want to try to at least change over to that side of the map a little bit because they haven't been able to really get vision strongly that way because they've been putting so much presence around bot side. Yeah, and it seems like they're kind of just banking too much on being able to find these plays and, and protect their Draven. I mean, hell, even a lot of times around mid, but Xiaohu has kind of been egoing them with this movement uh, and never giving an opportunity over. They really want to find something here. They're trying to get everything, but Crisp is just playing so stalwart. Xiaohu, the same. And this is the approach that Weibo wanted. They are literally standing there in the face of IG saying, hit me and see what happens. Now, Xiaohu might not want to take that one to the face as the charm's going to connect as well. Nature's Grasp going to utilize. Xiaohu trying to get his way out of there. Now, Crying going to take a decent amount of damage now. Oh, no, Xiaohu! He's going to flash. Tianjin wants it. He's a hungry predator, and that's a 470-pound lion that wants a little bit of meat. Yeah, they were able to connect the charm this time around, which in allowed for more damage to be able to come out. Xiaohu, I think, also seemed like he wanted to follow up on Xiaohu going in. Probably could have ran away uh, immediately after. I mean, we'll see in the replay what was possible, but nice by IG still finding small wins on the map. They just have to get as much as possible. That Sundered Sky start rip big for Tianjin, but now he's going to have to be a little careful as Xiaohao wants to get something back for his bot side. A little bit of stability gained for Light, and I think he comes out the better out of this because of a little bit of the lack of dying, I guess, from Weibo so far towards bot side. 
Yeah, it's been it's it's kind of funny, right? We keep highlighting the the stacking around bot side, being around bot lane, but not actually having all that much aggression uh, around this half of the map. And so far, this is just very reminiscent to Weibo and IG playing a week ago. Again, the aggression it coming is. out from IG in the early game, finding a very small lead, not really in terms of gold, but you can feel they have control with where their champions are at with their power spikes. Now, just being able to translate it into a bit more. We're going to get a little look at the replay on that mid lane fight. And, uh, really good combinations there from IG, but Xiaohu just a little quick. Yeah, and uh, it seems like actually really no way of being able to get out with Tianjin holding on to that ult. It was just a really nice combo, like you said, net into the charm, allowing for so much damage to then be able to come through with both teams' combos. Herald up on the map now. This is where we really want to see IG scrapping, and look look at the mini-map. It looks like Weibo are willing to take part. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they're feeling a little bit more confident now that they have first item spikes for both Xiaohu and Light. Light has regained a little bit of that momentum in mid lane. Rift Herald has spawned, so IG will just be rebuffed to the two grubbies. And actually, just going to start that one up as Weibo right now with the pressure they have from mid. Maybe judging of, hey, fighting in the 5v5 is too hard because Weibo's comp actually should counteract IG's pretty well. I mean, having the disengage from things like yeah. the Gragas and the Maokai, all of that lockdown onto things like Rengar and Ari that are jumping in, so... They're going to be fine going for the trade, but still, it means Weibo really aren't falling behind at all this game. And we're seeing the bread and butter. Xiaohu in the side lane trying to take down the turret here. He's starting to get a little bit confident in his position on the map. They will end up taking this as well. So first turret to Weibo. Have a lot of gold going up there. Is now ZDZ going to try and hold by himself? Has the cask. Is going the AP Gragas, which we've been seeing way more of in solo queue since the slight nerfs have come to Gragas. Uh -oh. Ooh. Oh, fine. Ooh. And it's giving time for Chris to be able to come react on the map and isn't going to give a chance for IG to look to make this play again. Really good denial with the use of the ulti from ZDZ and was feeling very confident with this pick of the Gragas into YSKM's Jax. And now you're starting to see the utility come alive for him, even with the AP Ooh. version. Now, Shao making play a top. play towards top side. YSKM, you're in some trouble. What are you going to do here? Counter-Strike is available. Will the real weapon come out, or is it just the stick? He's going to try to get the combo onto Shao Hao. Now he's in some trouble in the alcove gameplay. And Shao Hu just wants a little bit of gold. There he is. Now, on him, mid lane got caught. He's trying to get over to Wink. He should be fine. It's great the tempering there coming from Weibo. Don't overchase. You've already found a win on top side. IG, it seemed like we're trying to answer back around bot with how aggressively they were playing in that bot side jungle, but not able to get anything off of it. And look at Weibo, that Herald is going to be used immediately. Oh my goodness. We're going to take a look at how that happened actually on just not expecting the combo over the wall. Yeah, and just punishing one of the moments where Pike is trying to roam and play alongside. Uh, the, the Rengar and the Ari. Okay, okay, okay. They want a tempo play here. They have Xiaohu way overextended. He's going to try to run away. On needs to get this kill here. Or crying getting it's not too bad, but they'll give it to On. And that's a lot of money. 750 gold. <laughs> so IG, going to love that. This Raven now. Hopefully going to be able to accelerate a bit more. I like the idea of Xiaohu just running away and trying to buy a bit more time. But IG going to be totally fine. Just getting closer and closer to uh, stronger power points. But let's talk some brass tacks here then, because we're 17 minutes in. We're getting close to that 25 to 30 minute win condition we set up for IG. They have not rolled over this game. They have not found a big advantage, even though they keep striking at the armor of Weibo. It's been nice, right? Because we've been seeing them find some picks, get some kills, you know, try and set up to find the lead. But it feels like Weibo have just done such a nice job of playing the map and Right, they did have winning lanes in mid and top, which kind of set up for where we've been. Still, though, IG sitting at two drakes, only two minutes until the next one. You have an item advantage on AD carry. Uh, they're still in a position where, where IG can be able to take this one as we get closer to Seoul. But Chemtech Seoul, probably not what they were hoping for. <laughs> I do like the IE second item for on completed because they can just strut their stuff a little bit more on the map itself. And they get one big pickoff. That's a, a huge ticket for IG. Again, they have about that one minute, 50 second mark till that dragon spawns. But Weibo are actually the ones wanting to make a play here on IG. They got a flash forward. Shao goes in for the neck deep play and he 
finds it. IG had been left trounced, and Chris gives him the thumbs down. And both, all three of the kills going between the two 80 carries. Light getting even bigger. Xiaohu getting some more gold under his belt. This bot lane turret is almost dead, so it's going to be even more gold going over to Weibo. Huge swing. They pulled the trigger so well on that, too, and... They grabbed the Maokai first and foremost from blue side, realizing that that spacing, that availability of playmaking is monumental. I love calls like this where you recognize, hey, sure, the Ari might be on this side of the map, but we can engage faster and find a pick while we still have numbers advantage. And that's exactly what they do, blowing them up. Great engage by Xiao Hao and followed by Chris to make this all possible. And uh, again, we came into this one like, okay, Xiao Hao, you, you got to show what's up. You got to earn that position on Weibo. I think with that play alone, he has definitely made a statement of his own. Again, he was a big prospect from anyone's legend, spending over two years with that organization after also being on Rogue Warriors before that. But it's been a uh, coming of age story, it feels like, for Xiao Hao and Weibo. Yeah, and right, a lot of it hasn't been down to him playing bad individually. It's just been this Weibo as a unit does, like, hasn't really... Uh, worked all that well together. Uh, they've really relied on some of the strength of their individuals, or again, some band-aids, things like Talia, things like the Twisted Fate, to be able to get them ahead, but definitely having a really solid game on Maokai this time around. Hell, he also had a great game on Poppy in their last series against IG. Yeah, he did. It's, uh, you know, maybe it helps uh, fuel a little bit of that fire there. As IG will strike on their third dragon of the game. That stacking starting to come to fruition. But Weibo, they want the fastball play. They want to try to take the Baron. They're going to go for it. Even the fastball uh, build coming up from ZDZ with a cosmic drive. Chris, waiting just gather some information. They're doing this quite fast. tianton has got the predatory instincts popped. He's going to get that engaged. Here comes the whirling death. It's not going to be enough. Weibo grab the Baron. Now they can take the fight after. But Wink is looking for an angle here. He's got it. The boat skewer connects. He's got the big target, though. I don't know if that's who you wanted. ZDZ able to tank up a storm, but on executes him and gets the gold. Now, Weibo under turret. They do have a lot of strength to defend here. And Tianze getting low. Charm connects. Boat skewer. And another kill goes to on. That's huge. They are circling like sharks. As IG are now moving in. Wig wants it on. And Tianze, they're hovering over the tower. They just need to find the way clear. And they cannot. No, able to survive, but still, as IG, you're gonna be you're gonna be thankful that you're able to take away two barons. But I think Weibo are still walking away feeling completely fine. IG are on soul point, but it feels like we're at a point where Weibo feel comfortable going for team fights. That they're able to match in items, and again, it feels like compositionally, it should be hard for IG to get in, as we see here. All they need is one lone crisp. <laughs> to press R to make sure that no steal is possible by the Rengar, even if on himself did get close. But then just able to run them down, right? Having a lot of great tools to where they can keep this going. It feels like a big reason Weibo didn't want to take the fight was because of the tools they used to stop the engage. But great charms, great hooks. And that's what this comp relies on, right? It relies on those skill shots connecting for you to be able to find anything as well. Beautiful net into the charm. Crisp sacrificing his life uh, for light. And honestly, a little bit of a redemption play from Crying, who was missing a lot of those early charms there. <laughs> it's a couple of uh, key ones, as we see. And Weibo back on the map with IG playing towards pressure. Again, they will lose a little bit of that momentum in mid lane because the Baron is still up and available. At least the buff is for Weibo. Like I said, before Weibo went on that run to World Finals, they finished six. That's going to be the hopium that I'm selling right here in this series. <laughs> Weibo, this could be the start of a run, Mazel. This could be, be but IG for their first time in multiple years making it here. I think they are looking for a run of their own as they have not known glory in a long, long time. But maybe with this new retooled roster, they can do so. Nice little bush play from Weibo. Will be spotted out in the end. They couldn't hold it but they still have the buff for 40 seconds here, Lyric, and they pull the Nature's Grasp, which means a tier two goes down. Very stock and standard, right? Uh, using that Baron, grouping up together. They already have great wave turn, great ability to take turrets with the double marksman. And then just the icing on, uh, on top is that Maokai to make sure that no scrapping happens. So sitting at almost a 3K gold lead, 23 minutes in as the side that scales. It can't, like, this is not, it's not going to play it. We got to find a different plan. There's got to be a gambit somewhere, something, because we said IG grabbed this composition to roll over Weibo. 
But Weibo have stood the test of their storm. They have a double marksman composition who is on the cusp of three items apiece, and that is some damage. IG do have three items on their Draven, so there's at least something there. And, you know, kind of, kind of speaking of IG, I mean, hell, the only playoff team that they beat to get into playoffs is BLG, which is True. kind of ridiculous. How how many teams is BLG worth? Is BLG worth like two <laughs> or three other playoff though. teams? Let's be real, though. There was some magic going on in that series because Loyan just has Shun's number. Like, it, it just has been the case. And, you know, it's, he just came in and mind controlled him. It's the same thing of why Crying is going to have no chance in this 1v1 against Shao. Oh, sure, no. IG can win. But, like, right? Crying, Crying coming after Shao into that mid lane role. For, for Shun and Lil Yen, it was the same thing. Shun coming after Lil Yen. Yep. Originally on IG. The mental block is real. It is real. We'll see if it actually comes to fruition here. But Cry and start to step up in this mid game. I, I think when we came into this series, uh, we had a lot of props to give to Shaohu, a lot of the direction he's shown from the mid lane there. But Cryon was also a very important answer into Shaohu tonight if, he was, if, uh, if IG were going to have a chance. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like Crying is one of the more consistent pieces on the roster. Might not have some of the highs as some of his teammates, but definitely doesn't have the lows. Uh, you know that we've seen from people like Yscam, Tian Gen, hell, even even Lu Yen when he was in and with, was you know being so hit or miss. But Wink, very disconnected from the rest of his team right now. Bit, it seems bit. like Weibo either not knowing what's up or not caring whatsoever. The deepest flank you ever seen. He's secret agent man Wink right now. I don't think he actually got spotted out there either. I, I feel like they must have agent. had an idea. I mean, see, they have an idea, right? So he, he used his W, walked into jungle before, like, as oh, he did that. Oh, so. did we cast or curse him? Is he able to get out of this one? Uh, Going to take a couple shots to the back. Does end up using the Spirit Rush there. But now the Dragon was started up by IG, forcing Weibo's hand down towards this pit. I'm gonna go for it. Ult coming out from Shao Hao. Oh, might just get locked in. He's gonna have to cleanse his, uh, his way out of that one. He's gonna jump to the bush, but he can't get away. Oh, big engage from Wise Cam, though. They might actually find it. Wink can't get the resets, and now this is where Weibo thrives. They are in a front to back, and they are decimating the competition. Wise Cam is trying to hold on for dear life, but the storm has come, and it's Weibo. They're out of control. And Weibo, I mean, they have 30 second death timers. They're gonna go for this push, actually covering all their bases. Even gonna still take the Drake. I don't know if they have enough time to end. They probably don't, but at the very least, having enough time to get this inhibitor. Great, great progression of the fight by Weibo. I love seeing these AD carries that probably should be scared of all the damage on the opposite side, actually jumping forward, going in even, even farther to the fight. It's crazy. The confidence that Weibo is exuding right now is palpable. Like, they are literally giving IG everything they could ask for coming into this game, and they are destroying them. I mean, having complete control over the river, I love the, the use of Mount Hell, but then it's here, where we see the Tristana jump out and then just retool both him and Life and just jump back in. They are not afraid God, of the other members being able to get on them. They immediately take down the Drave, and what a great angle. Poor Weibo. flash there to get out of Cryon's charm was so clutch as well. Little things go in the way of Weibo. Leads out to a 5,000 gold lead now. And uh, I think coming into the season, we knew the potential that this Weibo roster had, uh, even with some of the changes they were having, because Shaohu and Light are a consistent carry duo, and they have shown out in this first game. Exactly right. I mean, just any team that's going to have, especially these two guys as two of your carries, there's always going to be some chances, some games there, and it's why Weibo, uh, even when they're having a kind of down split like they've had, have been able to make... Oh, no. Cast. You just got invited to a bounce house that you want no part of. Tianzhen is gone. He's been made into a pelt, and that lion ain't going to have any roar behind him today. And now they're going to be able to look for the spare, and they don't have the same tools to look for return. Uh, with both ZDZ and Shao's ults being down, but Crisp still has his. So IG gonna try and come to contest. The engage is still possible. Baron getting about half health here on. Very scared to even step up. Wink is there. Not gonna be able to get anything over the wall there. And the Baron goes over to Weibo once again. That'll be their second of the game so far. I like that Weibo even kept formation just in case that IG walked in because Chris was nowhere near the pit. He was actually sitting in that brush. Uh, on the opposite side, closer to where Blue Buff is. So Weibo covering all their bases. They secure the Baron. And I mean, right now, 
I mean, it doesn't even really matter if IG gets soul at this point, it feels like. Weibo have the pushing power, have the damage to not only win fights, but also to just demolish IG's base. And we were just talking, oh yeah, you know, the double marksman composition, it's almost on three items for both of them. Xiao just slams his items on the table and says, I got four of them bad boys now. And uh, it's going to be very difficult for IG to pick apart. But this is, again, the story we wanted to tell for this first game. They got all the confidence. They got all the comfort picks. They got Tianjin's Rengar. They got Ahn's Draven and Wink's Pike. But you needed to have a massive snowballing advantage with this kind of composition, and you just didn't get it. Yeah, and, you know, I love the point you point out Shahu's items in regards to that, too, because Shahu knowing, like, hey, I don't actually need to build more damage. It's just all about having more defensive stats now with, with how IG's comp plays out, the single target CC, the single target damage. He's going to be able to out DPS them r regardless. So, Bloodthirster and GA, definitely huge buys for Weibo, and it's going to be even harder for IG. See if uh, IG have anything left in the tank here. They're going to focus on CDZ, but he's a tanky boy. Now, Tianjin gets the ire right back from way, but YSKM was going for a long flank, but he's already losing his team. Two kills for Xiaohu. Make it a third, make it a fourth. Let's get him a penta kill here, Weibo. That's one hell of a way to start it off. But Xiaohu, the man, the graceful legend of our league, does not care for glitz and glamour. He cares about winning the damn game. And Weibo wiped the floor with IG in game one. Man, Xiaohu is so cold. Like, how gangster is that to, like, not actually be the only person on your team to not care about your penta? You're like, no, we are winning this playoff game. Man is unaffected. I was even watching the player cams when he was dancing around all of, like, Tianjin and Krine's attempts to gank him, and he was, like, the most, like, apathetic guy there could be. He did not care whatsoever. What a great performance from Weibo. Can't smile till the job is done. Weibo definitely handed in some hefty paperwork in that first one. And I, I think the biggest conversation before we go to break is that, you know, IG got what they wanted, but they came up short. So how does that progress into the end of the series draft itself? Oh, gosh, we're going to have to see so many answers to the questions. We will be back after a short little break.